So for the past several months, we've been using a Spartan Power Inverter Charger, which has never actually been able to charge from an AC input source. So today I'm gonna to be swapping that out with a Victron Energy Multi Plus 24 volt, 3000 watt inverter charger. Hopefully this is gonna solve our problem and allow us to charge our bus batteries on gray rainy days like today when we don't have the option for solar power. So let me show you how I do that. Okay, so the first step is to remove the old inverter charger. So this is the Spartan Power inverter charger that we used to have. I've disconnected the positive and negative terminals from our batteries, as well as disconnected the AC input and output wires as well. Now, this is the front of the unit. This is where all of your connections actually happen. So you have your positive and negative terminal hookups for your ba battery banks, as well as your AC input and output. There we go. Okay, now to put the new one in place. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the Spartan Power Inverter versus the Victron Energy Multi Plus. As you can see, the Victron Energy unit is smaller pretty much in all directions comparatively to the Spartan Power Inverter and gives you all of the same capabilities plus a bunch more as well. Now granted, it's double the price, so it is going to be a little bit more compact. It's going to have more options. And honestly, I wish I would have just gone this route from the very beginning. This is what the insides of the Victron Energy Unit looks like. So all of your terminations happen inside of the unit with a cover that then goes over it. Kind of similar with the Spartan Unit, except it just has these little plastic covers for the positive and negative terminals, as well as this little metal plate where all of your AC connections happen. So it was a little bit more difficult to make that unit actually work, whereas I think this is going to be much more seamless. Okay, so I have the new Victron Energy Inverter Charger moved in the rough location that it's going to be in. Now I just have to make some marks so that I can figure out where to mount the security plate that hooks to the underside of the unit to keep it in place. All right, and this is what the security plate looks like that will be hooked on from underneath. So that portion gets hooked into this little lip that's on the underside of the unit. And then once you secure the two screws in front, that'll hold it in place. Okay, so now I've got the Victron Energy Unit in its place. I mounted it so that I could still access the two back screws for the front panel, but still fit perfectly in underneath the couch here. The only downside is that my positive and negative DC terminals are not long enough to reach in this unit, so I'm going to have to go and run and grab some longer cables. Okay, so I have my AC input and AC output all terminated within the inverter. This is 6 gauge wiring, which is acceptable for up to a 50 amp service, and that's going to be the maximum, which is the default setting for this inverter. I also have my temperature sensor and voltage sensor wired into the inverter. I just need to hook it up to my battery bank and then run some new leads from my positive and negative terminals. One of the differences of this inverter comparatively to the Spartan Power Inverter was that it called for a 50 amp breaker so I did go ahead and install a service disconnect breaker. This is just going to add an extra level of safety so that if there's an issue with the power that we're connecting to at an RV park or a home base, then it will automatically trip this breaker before damaging the inverter itself. And how this is connected is you have the hot line coming in that goes to the service breaker, then a line going out to the inverter, all of the neutrals are connected into the neutral safety block, and then all of the grounds are connected into a separate ground termination block. This black wire right here runs back to the ground termination block that is by our battery bank, and then from there, there's a line that runs directly to the frame of the bus. So again, this is just going to add an extra level of safety and help protect our $1,500 investment. Okay, so I went ahead and created the new, all I actually needed was a new negative lead and then I used the old negative lead from the previous inverter charger and made that into my positive so I didn't have to use more materials than I needed to. But now 
the inverter charger is actually on and live. I have also ran a connection to our color control panel as well, which I'll show you in a moment. But we are currently running off of shore power, charging our batteries and running the entirety of the bus. So it was in fact a defective charger with inside our previous inverter that was causing us not to be able to charge from shore power. The next thing that I had to do with the inverter charger was run a connection to the positive lead and negative lead for the temperature sensor, which is right here, as well as the voltage sensor for the inverter charger. And I also had to run a positive and negative lead to our color control panel and inserting a one amp slow blow fuse into the mix. So that's what this unit is right here. And then these are the fuses from our solar system in between the batteries and our Victron Energy Charge Controller. And then another fuse going for the batteries to our 24 to 12 volt down converter. So this down converts the 24 volt battery bank to a 12 volt and that's what runs our 12 volt lighting, our water pump, our water heater as well as a couple of other things. And then we also have a Victron Energy battery balancer. And this balances the charging cells between our two 12 volt batteries that are wired together to make a single 24 volt battery. And then lastly, what I had to do was connect up our color control unit. And so this tells us the incoming shore power the AC load that we're currently using, as well as the battery bank and how much or how little of a charge we're getting off of that. On the back side of this unit, I have a RJ45 connection going to the inverter charger. And then this is the positive and negative termination that I have going to the battery bank to give this unit power. So the last thing that I need to do is order a cable that goes from the back of this unit and connects directly into our Victron Energy Charge Controller. That will bring up a readout right here that will tell me exactly how much voltage and wattage is coming in from my solar panels and will also show a line that goes over to the batteries on how it's charging as well. That way I can get a full readout on what's going on with the system just from this quick display. You can also have a slightly different display as well that shows you battery status, how it's charging, the time since last alarms, as well as if you had any tank sensors, which we don't have. It also shows the current AC limit that's coming into the bus. If we had connected to a 30 or a 50 amp, that would show 30 or 50 amps right there. And then there is one other screen here that just shows the vehicle information. Again, it's basically the same as the previous screen, but I prefer this one so that I can just show exactly what's going on. And to just show how the rest of the system is connected, just so that you can see, we have a 300 amp battery disconnect. So I can disconnect the battery bank from the inverter charger. This is the Victron Energy battery monitor system. So this wire runs to the battery monitor. This is a temperature sensor feed that runs to it to tell me exactly the temperature of the battery bank. And then from here, this negative lug goes to the inverter. This one goes back to our 24 to 12 volt down converter so that we can see exactly how much power. And then we have a 300 amp fuse in line before the inverter as well, just some extra safety precautions. Then lastly, this is the connection on the outside of our bus. So this is what is called a dog bone. It's a 50 amp to 20 amp hookup. And then we have a 12 gauge electrical line running back to a GFCI on the outside of the house. And this will allow us to just plug into any regular 110 connection, or we can plug into a 50 amp service as well when we go to a campsite and need that much power. However, we're not running a microwave, we're not running AC, we're not running a massive heater, so we really don't need that much of a connection, but because our inverter charger has that capability, I wanted to make sure that we would as well. So I hope you found this video useful in showing how we were able to swap out a non-working, well, partially working inverter charger to a fully functioning system. Now we can charge our battery banks off of a standard 110 connection all the way up to a 50 amp circuit, as well as we can use our portable generator to be able to charge our battery bank if we're in more of a boondocking situation or either in trees or if it's cloudy and we don't have enough solar output. So if you did like this video, make sure and give it a thumbs up 
If you have any questions, go ahead and comment below and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss another video. Thanks for watching.